hi guys welcome back to my channel and welcome <laughs> if you've been here and you have had hope that one day i will show up and show my face here again guys hi and i just disappeared that is so embarrassing that is so embarrassing but in my defense i have just been enjoying and basking in newborn cuddles so it was well worth it but i am back and i hope that this time i'm here to stay guys <laughs> ah, yo oh my gosh um i honestly missed you guys and yeah i'm just so happy to be in front of the camera again i actually recorded this video yesterday you guys i recorded this video yesterday from start to finish and then towards the end i realized that you know when you put lip gloss on your lips and then you have this build up stuff white stuff here <laughs> high school and if you had the papa clouds here guys towards the end i realized that i have this build up and i was like there is no way i'm posting that video because i know that you guys are not gonna hear anything I'm saying because the entire time you'll just be focusing on my lips and it was such a shame because I sat an entire 30 minutes I think it was 30 minutes just talking to the camera only for me not to post that video but anyway we are here again and we are gonna do this I am excited to share this with you and take you guys along this journey it's not a journey it's already passed yeah but like share my experience and Thank you so much you guys for sticking around i really appreciate it it means a lot to me that you guys are still here even though i had i have been silent but today i wanted to share my birth story wait actually let me go check if this time the papa said wait <laughs> okay who's safe we can carry on so anyways guys yeah today i wanted to share my birth um, story I don't have a video so I didn't shoot a birth or vlog I do not um, I don't want to say I don't believe in it but for me it's just something that I don't think that I want to do but I am gonna share my story and I'll put some pictures for you guys so you can see and I can take you through the the journey um, while I share the story so anyways if you're new here I recently became a second time mom right to my baby girl k baby k and i just wanted to share my birth story and just how different it was from ruby you guys so with baby k and i'm gonna excuse me but i'm gonna keep comparing between my experience here ruby and this experience right now right because i think a lot of uh, my journey sort of is influenced by Leroy being born as well so anyways throughout my pregnant oh no actually no before we fell pregnant um or oh, while we were trying i already knew like part of my birth plan was that i was going to give birth naturally as i did with Leroy, right so i'm gonna push out the baby out of my vjj and i have no problem with that because i believe that i have a very high pain tolerance and I mean, I did a galeru, so I felt like, what's another baby to pop out, right? So I was like, yeah, that's what I'm gonna do, and um, that was my birth plan. I discussed that with my with my gynae, and things were good. So Shapo, as time went on, my gynae said to me, so with Leruo, for reference, with Leruo, with Leruo, I was induced um, when for her to be born, I had to be induced. And then, um, and this is because Leroux was overdue by two weeks, right? So I had to be induced so that she comes. So, yeah, and then I fell pregnant and then time went on, time went on. And then as the days were going, my, my guy me said that, okay, this is my due date. And if I don't give, give birth, I think this was in third trimester. My guy was like, if you don't give birth on this day, then we're going to have to induce you, right? so if if nothing happens before your due date then you have to you have to come on the day of your due date so you get you get induced not on the day of the due date but like the day before i think they normally you come the day before and then they induce you around about 12 a.m and then your baby will come on the day of your due date right so anyways um shabu 
I'm like, okay, cool. But in my mind, ne, with my plan being giving birth naturally, I did not want this time around to get induced because penia inducement. Is it inducement? But yeah, penia, guys, that pain, you know, that pain is like 10 times worse. When I was reading on the internet, people were saying that because it doesn't happen naturally, like your body does not naturally release those is it the hormones or whatever um and they induced by this pill then that's why it's not it's not natural right so that's why it becomes like two times painful not even two times like 10 times painful so i was like i don't want to go through that and if anything i just want the experience of my body just going into labor naturally on its own so i just want to um like my water break i just want to experience that way my water breaks and then i get these contractions and then i time them you know the whole experience right that's what i want to do and so i started preparing for that because um when you go on tiktok when you go on youtube when you go on the internet you can prepare for labor for natural labor right so i started going on um on the internet to research like how i can prepare and the things that came up were that you can eat dates like three dates every day i think or three to eight dates something like that you can eat dates every day um because they soften your cervix you can drink raspberry leaf tea it helps with contractions um and it just speed things up so um and then you can like bounce on a ball my husband even got me that big exercise ball I, I would i was sitting on it every single day bouncing on that ball taking walks going on walks um just to make sure that the baby drops and goes further down into the pelvic area i think this is not a biology class now so please so anyways guys i was doing all these things preparing older oh, i was preparing Shabu, um days like days were going like matata tata mata my right so closer to or almost closer to like my due date so by the way the baby was uh, my due date was the 15th of february right and i was praying so hard i don't want this child to be born on valentine's day guys ah, ah. <laughs> that's the one thing i didn't want i didn't want this baby to be born on valentine's day but anyway my due date was the 15th of feb okay shapu i am praying i'm preparing i'm doing all these things i'm praying on top of that god please just let or allow my body to go into birth naturally i don't want to uh, be given a pill i don't want to i don't want anything like i know that it's possible with you so please make it happen i beg you guys i was praying every single day i think i prayed even before giving uh even before um we fell pregnant you know this has been one one of those things that i really wanted to experience because, because like i said God, we, i was induced okay fine so the days keep going and getting closer to my due date my sister even visits she's here and my sister lives overseas she comes here and she's like girl like what's happening and we're praying or at least she mustn't go back before the baby is born so that she gets to see the baby because she lives far right so we are praying mole mudimu please uh, can it happen now so she came a week before my due date we're praying okay can something happen like now here between um i mean just before my due date and we are praying i'm walking i'm doing exercises guys get that color like a stretch i was doing everything under the, not everything under the sun but like things that are recommended to do when you're in this position and you want things to like you know so yeah i keep doing these things and nothing is happening okay my sister even goes back i think she she left two days before my due date nothing was happening hi okay sharp we're here and then on the 14th of february yeah got valentine valentine's day well some of you guys are getting pampered live for my plomo leads are god knows why team my feeling so i didn't do that tell you tell you tell you next time you will only expect it while you guys were getting down and dirty I was walking into the labor, into the maternity ward to get induced. My anxiety, guys, waking up in the morning. 
my anxiety waking up in the morning realizing that nothing is happening yo guys i was so sad i was so sad anyway yeah we were also even doing the deed because you know by leona how fresh is it chipsy you know it does speed up that process but yeah nothing was just nothing was happening guys so anyways that day i wake up and nothing is happening i am anxious i am down like i'm feeling down i'm feeling anxious and i just keep wondering please don't do that okay so we wake up here like i said you guys really busy even it was in the evening because my doctor said come between 7 and 10 p.m to um to what's this to get ex admitted to get admitted and then yeah then we'll induce you and then you'll give birth the next day so it was right in the evening lily bees guys lily bees were 15 lily bees and if if you weren't careful little tola luna lia maternity ward next day so anyways we went we go to the maternity ward shop when we get there my husband is doing the paperwork i'm feeling down i go and i lay on the bed um my, my husband does the paperwork when he's done he comes when he comes the nurse also comes ne? a few minutes after or nining i could even need yeah but the next the nurse comes you guys and when the nurse comes she comes to do the i think they call it a sweep you know this thing there is nothing i hate more than that thing this camera looks like it's a bit skew yeah i think this is better there is nothing i hate more than and i'm sure a lot of women who have given birth like can relate guys yo that thing is so painful when they put their fingers in like this and yo so anyway she did she did, she did that to check how dilated i was and when she checked me she's like how you are between one and three centimeters dilated which honestly i don't know what that means but like yeah she's like you're between one and three centimeters where's, where's the one and two or what yeah but anyway she's like you already dilated so it seems like your body is doing this thing on its own guys imagine how excited i was at this miracle in Thailand on the day that well the day before yeah the day before i gave birth my body is about to go into labor on its own i was so excited okay i could not believe it i knew that i could rely on you and i knew that i could trust you because you still made this happen even at the last hour so guys even when you pray don't cease like don't stop praying even if one of him and it gets to the last hour please do not stop praying so anyways that happens right so i'm dilated i'm like oh okay now i'm excited my body's doing this on its own i'm calling my mom i'm excited I'm like yo babe thank god you know god heard our prayers um so now sharp i'm relaxed there at the hospital and when i say that i did everything to prepare for natural labor guys i mean everything i even went as far as buying the headphones my poor headphones i bought headphones guys because i was listening to hypnobirthing um what do they call it podcasts hypnobirthing podcasts but it's basically like you listen to this voice of affirmations that get you in like a positive mood um and they basically say like my body can do this my body was made for this i'm capable of giving birth Da, 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 all these positive aff affirmations because they they say that like when you go into labor the most important thing whether it's a c-section or you're going to push out a baby the most important thing is to prepare mentally um because if your mind if in your mind you're saying that it's going to be painful then your mind already communicates that to the rest of your body you tense up it becomes painful so i was trying to relax and i was relaxed oh, the contraction center they were coming they were mild but next time you kind me so i was just sitting there like breathing through them i even learned how to breathe properly i was breathing through these contractions like just wholly relaxed holy zen guys really ready to push oh, okay fine and then this keeps like this keeps happening right so i'm busy there like laying down on my bed okay then after a few hours they come i think this is now in the ams yeah i think in the ams 
um i forgot the times guys exactly but you'll have to bear with me right so i think in the am's bahudla happy they came back to do this check again and they put their hands and you know what i realized now yo guys that thing is so it's painful but like there are people who are just rough like because the first nurse that did this neck like it was okay i could bear it i could stand it yeah but then there was another one who came in the morning i that lady made me cry oh god like i cried like she was just like yeah i shame i cried yo like i'm getting goosebumps just thinking about that experience even now like yo guys i cried and then when she checked me she's like i am i think i was like three three centimeters so remember when i came in they said between one and three now they said three centimeters okay sharp fine but it felt like okay things are moving sharp oh, and then in the yeah i was saying my husband had left he came back I'm like babe things are still moving my body's still contracting i'm still experiencing contractions i could feel the contractions um and then sharp my mom also comes to the hospital and then while they're still waiting I'm going there to see her because like gestering, even though I have contractions, I can still like walk around, you know, but also at that point, they were still mild. So I'm going to see my mom. We are chatting and then okay, I go back, bang, check a happy. When they checked me, I think at that point I was like five centimeters and then they said, okay, now I need to move to the, the labor ward. And this was around maybe 3 p.m., 4 p.m. ish around that time yeah maybe 3 p.m yes so shab they moved into move into the labor ward to go and prepare for um delivery and now this is um this is the 15th of feb right so remember i got admitted at 14 but at night so slept there and then woke up in the morning so it's 3 p.m on the 15th of feb so i'm in the labor ward now with my husband okay they say you can you can walk up and down you can you know but not no, don't go too far because anything is possible we don't want your water breaking only hole and yeah it's a disaster so anyways i'm walking up and down right there by the lab, labor ward trying to speed things up walking up and down walking up and down and then eba maybe like 5 p.m six ish now i'm like okay starting to get a little bit concerned nah, not worried but like just concerned or okay like i feel like this has been going on for too long and i'm not experiencing those intense intense contractions they check me again i'm five i'm still five centimeters this is like three hours later i'm still five centimeters i now um i can see like when i look at my nurse i can see that mm -mm, you know she's also a little bit concerned she goes and calls my doctor and my guy is like i yeah leave her for maybe like an hour or so how's the baby actually he says how's the baby doing and so the nurse is like no baby's fine right um hey i keep getting this call from no caller id um so the, the nurse is like no the baby's fine okay and then he's like okay monitor her for like i think he said like more like for an hour 30 minutes i i don't remember guys like yeah i don't remember but bankwela for like another hour or so an hour nyana and then after that the nurse went back to yeah to the phone and I, at this point i'm in the bathroom i was in the bathroom my husband was just sitting out there the nurse was on the phone called my my gynae again and he's like she's like to him okay she's been on five centimeters nothing is happening and then i my my gynae said to her no we need to prepare for a c-section and i could hear her on the other side saying okay c-section good level a c-section cover dizzy kill toilet i went dizzy <laughs> um yeah i heard c-section and my heart dropped guys yo my heart dropped i was just like i didn't no ways and the thing is i already knew that um if if i'm not progressing any further if i'm not dilating any further the only thing that's gonna happen is that i'm gonna have a c-section and that is not what i prepared for i didn't go to this hospital to give birth a c-section remember in my mind i was like i prepared for a natural birth right i've been praying for a natural birth right so anyways i bought a c-section 
kena ole ke re ke ka thele tsa mla ke a ka utlwa handle mare ke utlwile handle ka ka ga ka utlwa mare ke utlwile i'm like <laughs> what is going on okay i come out of the toilet and then my husband is there like like i just saw his face like his face he he also had changed because i don't think that he was also prepared and he was um maybe scared on my behalf but yeah i looked at him and I walked towards him and I said more nice to me did you hear what the nurse said I'm like yeah we need to prepare for a C section and he said yes I'm like yo I am not prepared for a C section I did not prepare for a C section because when I came here I was prepared to give birth naturally so like what do you mean that I need to prepare for a C section I don't have time to prepare for a C section <laughs> um and yeah but that was going to be my reality and that was my reality but anyways yeah so then the nurse i started crying yeah my husband told me that we spoke and then i started crying the nurse came in they were consoling me um and then yeah they told me to go shower quickly i went in i went in and took a shower and then we prepared to go into theater guys I was so so anxious and so nervous because like I said for me C-section was never an option. Um Rui, I gave birth naturally got Rui like I said before. There were no complications with Rui whatsoever. Even now with baby K, there were no signs of any complications or any thing that could result in me having a C-section up until that point. Right? So Anyways, then yeah, we go into labor. Ugh, not into labor, into theater. They put me on the bed, the stretcher. They call it a stretcher. Ne? Then they push me. My husband is in scrubs, which honestly for me was just it, like it felt like a movie. I I know I always see people, um, you know, people who go and give birth. They'll post that picture with the husband in the scrubs and the that little thingy. Kadiba ya bona yo, you know, and they put like they'll take pictures together. Um, in the theater room after they give you the baby. I never thought that would be my reality. Like I honestly, I would see those pictures and I for me I was like, no, no I don't want to ever see myself in this situation. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just a choice. And yeah, for me it was just never an option. So anyways, we're going to theater Hafi Takamole. They're preparing the needles and the what what and eh, it was just a lot going on. There were so many people in the room um they injected me anesthesia is it anesthesia um, on the spine and for some weird reason i didn't feel like it didn't feel painful it wasn't that painful for me and i think they injected me twice um and then yeah the other one i think it was to numb my legs and yeah guys i could be wrong but like i remember being injected tw twice i think because there was a point where I was holding a pillow and I asked for my husband and I was like I I need my husband here in front of me like I can hold this pillow but I also want my husband so and he came Banklava and I was sitting there Banklava and then sharp we had things started happening um once I couldn't feel my legs I laid down and they were doing a whole lot of other things and then they cut me up they took out the baby and when they lifted her up there and i saw her and i heard her cry oh my gosh like that i had forgotten everything like i had forgotten everything i was not nervous anymore the anxiety was gone i was just like oh my gosh i get to have this beautiful baby girl you know i get to hold her in my arms after all of that um, and then they took her away obviously by Mutlina Mutlina. The first thing I say to my husband after that <laughs> I'm like to him, please check she has ten fingers and ten toes. That's the first thing I say. And I said to him, also you must take pictures because one of my biggest fear guys after giving birth is being given the wrong baby at the hospital. I know it sounds ridiculous, but that is my biggest fear. So I was like, take pictures of it, of her and so that we know should it happen that they give us the wrong baby we can look at these pictures and be like mm -mm, this is not the same person <laughs> so yeah my husband like went and took pictures and i asked him does she have 10 toes does she have 10 fingers and then um after that 
they they brought the baby put her on me and oh i was crying as you guys can see in the pictures i was crying and crying i was just so happy um and then one of the doctors asked to take a picture of us like together as a family and yeah after that they pushed me out and yo after this i felt like yeah no the real um what's the real word postpartum is now beginning yo because when i woke up after no i had already woken up man like what what point was it i think the anesthesia had worn off or what but like i started feeling pain guys like as soon as i got back to the maternity ward i started feeling this intense pain that i just couldn't bear like i yo like guys there is no pain like that i thought that that induction and natural birth that I had got really was painful, but the pain I felt or experienced after, yo, that 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 was painful. Like that was painful, especially here where, because like you know they stitch you up, but like that part where they close the stitch, there at that corner, yo, that part is painful. So yeah, it was really really sore. Like it was really sore. I honestly could cry the entire time. Um, and also while I was laying on bed, they gave me this thing to press it's a missang, um Medication like pain medication, right? I didn't even have the energy like I was laying there and the nurse was like you must pump it like if you you must pump it every five minutes or or, or But like she was like you must pump it so you get the pain medication Guys, I was so weak, like I was so weak and so tired. I I was forget I couldn't. I just couldn't. My my hands couldn't. I was feeling weak and get the drugs. I was feeling weak from the drugs and I just couldn't do this pumping thing anymore. So it was just making things worse because I'm not getting the pain relief and so I'm still in pain. Um and then the next morning the physiotherapist comes and you must walk. Yo guys, I'm dizzy. Like I remember at some point we were walking and I asked to sit down because I felt like I was gonna fall. And yeah, no, it was just it was too much. Like it was honestly too much. Like I I still would choose after experiencing C section. So now that I've experienced both actually, I've experienced C section, I've experienced natural birth. Although the natural birth I experienced was, you know, with the induction. But honestly, I feel like I would still choose natural birth over C-section because yo, that thing is painful, guys. Guys, that thing is painful. How do you guys do it? It's so painful. The recovery of it is that is, it's so painful. You know, I was saying to my mom, if who no tree, you just go there, you lay in the bed, they cut you up, they take out the bed, and then after that, you can you experience pain, but it's like just mild pain. I would do C-section probably because it's quicker. You know and you know exactly when your baby is coming um but yo that that i went through i guys that was a lot so anyways yeah now i am starting the healing process right at the hospital so i'm working with the physiotherapist and then they coming to, to teach me how to take care of this they're doing the laser therapy on it and yeah it's just a whole lot of things happening but thank god um I was healthy the baby was healthy so both of us were fine and i think after going through all of that i just felt like you know what as long as at the end of the day i got to hold this beautiful healthy baby in my arms that is the most important thing honestly so yeah, and then we came home and obviously the healing um had to continue from home and i hated every moment of yo guys i was like very frustrated honestly get that was section I was very like I was very frustrated and I think the one thing that frustrated me was the fact that I don't like feeling helpless and because I just had to be on bed rest and um, I couldn't walk properly I couldn't do this I couldn't do that I needed to be careful of this I needed like I just hated that you know I hate being like feeling like I can't do much I hate it so yeah that process in jail in Ngbora like in Ngbora and then there was a point where you know like sometimes i wake up and i forget that i need to get out of bed like a certain way so that i get to really and then i forget and then i just get how i feel like come out yo guys and then get to hell and then it's painful again and i'm frustrated because it's taking back it's taking me back it's taking me a step back right and i'm now frustrated i'm crying and i'm also frustrated like it was just a lot. I really, really, really did not enjoy 
that part of um, this whole birth experience but yeah i just i think i had to i mean i had spoke to like some of my friends like balisa was telling me take it easy on yourself you're gonna be fine you know it's just six weeks you'll see you're gonna be fine um you need to rest you need to relax just allow your body to do its own thing and so i really had to you know step back key call it to order or i should say like you know um, so yeah, and then I healed, um, I healed, I got to six weeks and I feel much better. I feel fine. And after six weeks, I was able to also start with my exercises. I'm doing my light, um, indoor walking exercises, which I used to do prior to falling pregnant. And I really love the, the exercise because they are very, um, like what's the word low impact but very effective as well so that's why i do them and i feel really good like my body feels good it feels good to it feels really good to have my body back again like feel like i own my body and i can do stuff that i want i can go outside and take a long walk i can exercise i can do whatever so it feels really nice and yeah guys that's the story um we were blessed with a beautiful baby girl baby k who will be turning two months on friday um you guys are seeing this on thursday so the day the day after she will be officially two months and her name is do good, do good, do good, do good, drum roll. I know that if you are on Instagram, you already know what her name is because I've already shared it. But her name, Kikano Kano Matole, was born on the 15th of February and she is just the sweetest, most beautiful little girl that we love so much and that Liru is just obsessed over. Kano means covenant or promise or oath or vow and how we came about how we came up with the name is that we were praying for we were praying to god to bless us with another child and um so he kept his covenant he made a promise to us and he kept it and so this is the covenant god made um to us or with us not to us yeah the promise he made to us in human form and so that's how the name came about and it's not short for anything it's her full name and that's what it means yeah it's just been an amazing journey with her and it feels so different this time around so so different in a huge way like in a huge way firstly the fact that i am now at home so my maternity leave doesn't end if i don't want it to end and i when i go back to work i don't i don't go back to work like the traditional way of waking up and going to work which was the case got we i work from home she's downstairs i can see her i control my own hours and so yeah it feels really different and it feels it feels really good and also the nice thing about being a second time mom i feel like is you're more relaxed and you're more like confident i mean i was confident with ruby you know with my parenting with ruby like i felt like i was confident i could do it but like right now i feel like it's like it's like um doubled but yeah this time around it's just so different in that like you have it sort of like feels like you have experience already so you sort of know what to expect in a sense Obviously, baby, babies are different, but your second baby is it. It gets easier, I think, for me personally. It just gets easier, and also I am not, um, I'm not like buying everything. I'm not doing this. I'm not doing that. Which is which is the case, Gabriel? Because it's the first baby. You're doing a whole lot of things because you don't know. Like this is your first child. You don't know what to expect. So yeah, with your second baby, I just feel like things um, just become easier. You know. Um, but yeah guys I think that is the end of the story um, but in closing I just wanted to say that for me this experience taught me that right although I was praying for a natural birth sometimes things don't always go the way we want I mean we know this we know this but for me I felt like I was not meant to have a natural birth with this baby in any event right in any case it was just not meant to happen I don't know why god knows why god knows why what could have happened but i don't even want to go dwell into that but i just know that um i was just not meant to have 
a natural birth and it's funny because the way things happened with my body going into labor on its own right with me experiencing contractions it looked like i was gonna go into natural labor on my own so i think that's how god set up this whole thing to make it look like um okay do not induce her because she's gonna give birth naturally only then to get to a stage where no actually my journey is to have um no actually the plan is to have a c-section and then bang bang cut the bang ta, and then bang cut and they get the baby out whereas had i been induced and this is just my theory it does not have to make sense to anyone but it's just my theory and this is just how i think about things right and how i believe things work for myself um so i feel like if had i been induced right because with liru and i don't know if in and i don't know if when you get induced it works the same for everyone but i believe that things happen quicker when you get induced you know you go into labor quicker you go through these intense con intense contractions but they go on like quicker and then you can you get to a point where you give birth right because this thing it's not like automatic i don't know if that's the word i want to use but it's sort of like mechanic but you know you, you guys know what i mean right so it's not happening naturally so they yeah so had i been induced i believe that had i been induced right things were gonna happen quick 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 and then i was gonna go into natural labor and push the baby out and i don't know what was gonna happen had i gone that direction so god said nope i don't want you to get induced because i can see what's coming when i can see what's coming should she get induced so i'm gonna flip the script and have her experience or feel these contractions naturally so that she goes and thinks that she's gonna have and have everyone think that she's gonna give birth naturally only for things to stop progressing so that they actually um cut her open and take out the baby i know it's not that it's not that dramatic guys why do i keep saying that it's not that dramatic but like basically have a c-section because i would never have had a c-section by choice right so that's why it had to happen that way i was never gonna walk in and say okay yeah let's do it let's have a c-section i was never gonna do that but god knew that it happened it had to happen that way and it's okay it's okay i am alive my baby's well is my baby's well she's healthy we both doing great and for me that is honestly what matters at the end of the day so yeah that is the end of my birth story i hope that it didn't scare anyone you guys if you are preparing please don't stop like my story doesn't is not gonna be the same as yours i know people are um drinking dates they are drinking raspberry i mean eating dates drinking raspberry leaf teas and they're going into labor quick because these are the stories that i came across on tiktok and on youtube so if you are preparing and you're doing all these things carry on please like do not let my story scare you into thinking that this will be your your um journey or your story as well it's not gonna be like that this was my own personal story yours will be different so please carry on doing what you need to do just pray for a healthy baby just pray to be safe and if you get that at the end that is all that matters i got that how i got there no longer matters is not no longer valid but what is important is that i got to give birth and i got to hold a healthy baby and i got to also um be okay after the whole experience so yeah uh we've come to the end you guys i hope you enjoyed this video if you are pregnant congratulations and i wish you all the best in your delivery and if you are praying for a journey i am praying with you and i'm sprinkling some baby dust upon you and your partner and it will happen for you as well i really hope you guys enjoyed this video and i hope that you are happy to see my face again because i'm happy to be back here and i'll see you guys in my next one <laughs> hopefully next week hopefully next week guys but yeah i think that one on the next week bye guys